everybody, welcome to HBC Original, and this is Spotlight. And also, we'd like to thank our sponsor for today, Bit by Bit. Today's show is sponsored by Bit by Bit. Together we grow. Want to be a sponsor? Email us for more info. Now back to the show. Hey, everybody. We'd like to welcome a special guest today. We have Alicia Bradshaw. She is a motivator, an innovator in her field. She's also a DSU grad. Uh, we want to say welcome, welcome. John, welcome. Hey, welcome, sis. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hey, man. Good, good. I'm so glad that you were able to make it today. Uh, you know, just, you know, first of all, being a being a DSU grad, you like you know. <laughs> from yeah. the door that from the door you're gonna get props straight up yeah. so uh hey I, i'm excited about what you're doing you know i work in schools and stuff like that so when i heard about what it is that you do you know i i, I immediately sort of gravitated to it i started looking through your stuff and i was like wow i said here it is i said we and we need so many more uh african americans that do this kind of work and so i commend you for you know, for uh, all the work you do. And I'm really interested in, in, in really getting involved in this conversation, you know, around around your technique and approach to anger management. And uh, you're, you're a motivator, you're, you're a motivational speaker too? I, I, yes, I dabble into motivational speaking as well. <laughs> okay, it's almost, it's almost hard to separate the two because, you know, it's like uh, if, if you're a person that really, you know, loves working with kids or working with people in general, Mm -hmm. And doing what you do, helping people to um, realize the best of themselves, uh, you you know, through, you know, helping them to, to, to um, you know, uh, deal with their anger, deal with some of their some of their uh, their challenges. It's almost like that that sort of comes with it because, you know, you've got to be able to speak life into people. Exactly. Because there's there's so much death all around them. So uh, exactly. this is a, this is truly, truly a blessing. So Vince, I, so 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 Vince, where'd you where'd you meet uh sister uh my sister yeah, here? And, and we, we, we want to begin also with that as well. We we the the humble begins. Now I know there's an end, but how did you get started? Mm -hmm. Yeah, more more or less um coming from you know um, a lot of times the HBCUs, uh, the students that you know are products uh, they don't always get seen, um, mm -hmm. they don't always get heard. Mm -hmm. So tell your story as far as the beginning to now. Definitely. So I attended um, Dell State in 2001. So I was there from 2001 to 2006 uh, after I graduated. Uh, well, my, my, my degree is in psychology. So after I graduated, um, I began working um, throughout the field, TSS worker, case manager, um, I work with uh, teens, you know what I mean? So I've been in this field for over 20 years, uh, working with you know low-income families, working with uh, children from out throughout the juvenile justice system. So I've been doing this for quite some time um, and I love everything about it. Just being able to see the families uh, start from A and then allowing them to see them produce to Z, that's always been amazing for me you know we want we want to always be able to help families so that's the that's always the end goal you know they may come mm -hmm. to you broken you know what i mean but toward the end we want to make sure that everything is pieced back together so yeah. that has always been my passion with working with youth and families mm, that's good that's good that's right. john, you, you know, john, john has a powerful quote uh, i think he's going to go ahead and emphasize on that he, he you know he's also uh, a motivational speaker i can so, tell so having you two on here is is a godsend. So you know, John, you know John, so, uh, so this you know. so so this quote, you know, sort of came about, you know, um, you know, working with kids and 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 really trying to help them to see it clearly so they can change it effectively. But in order for us to do that, you know, I think for one, we start off with starting off with a mantra that we can all um we can all grab something from. Okay. And in the beginning of our classes, we talk about this feeding your focus and starving your distractions. I love that. Um, because I mean, it's paramount that we do that in order for us to sort of reach the place called purpose uh, that we all desire to, uh, you know, to reach. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, because there's so many distractions in life. And one of the things when I read and is just looking at your body of work, um, I want to know, like, how did you know? Did you know from the, the 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 gate that this is what I wanted to do? Or did you, you know, sometimes sometimes what happens is the students go through general studies and they do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But did you know, like, off the rip that this is what you wanted to do? Most definitely no. Um, I actually got into anger management through a friend. So uh, he and I worked together and he was doing anger management on the side. So he said, Leash, I think you should, you know, take take a look at this. You know, um, you know, I'm an anger management facilitator and I think you will be, you know, amazing doing it. And I said, absolutely not. I said, I do not want to sit around angry people all day. I don't want to have <laughs> feelings with them. I'm good. So you know, when people see me, like I'm pretty, you know, cheerful. I try to make, you know, lemons out of lemonade, you know. So I said, absolutely not. He's like, just come and just check it out. So. I said, okay. So I went with him to one of his sessions and it was life changing. You know, you think that you walk in and you're going to be seeing all of these angry kids. And that wasn't the case. You know, sometimes kids came to our program because they just got caught up into some situations. Right. Mm -hmm. So they had to, they were court ordered to do the program. So, um, you know, once just listening to some of their stories and I kind of like, you know what, let's do it. So I interviewed for the position and, um, I got the position at the time and it was amazing. You know, you you sometimes go and thinking that you're changing their lives and sometimes they end up changing your lives because you yeah. know all of us are one situation away from being behind bars. You know, if you just take that one step, that one thought and you like, you know, should I either you can go left or you can go right. So you have mm-hmm. to be careful of your decision making or you could end up in jail too. So it's it was it was a beautiful thing. Oh, that's good. That's good. Because, you know, a lot of people, I think, you know, they think the thing that you are, and initially anyway, the thing that you are sort of predestined to do is something that you always feel good about. It could be something that irritates you. You know, it irritates you to the point where, you know, you want to, you want to develop a solution, you know, for helping this, this issue of this problem that people are grappling with on a daily basis. Exactly. And so it's interesting to know that 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 dynamic, you know, was part of how you sort of came uh, to the place you're at now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, is there, now, now, I'm me person. I, I I have a uh, a therapist that I actually see. Okay. You know, um, and it really helps me tremendously with, you know, my sometimes I have little anger issues. I have different things that I that I deal with, mm-hmm. and. You know, typically in our, in our race, like we don't really, we don't really like do that. Like, exactly. you know, do you find that? Like, what do you, what do you find? Like, when you're dealing with different clients, clientele, do you find, as far as you know, we're concerned? And then, how do you educate people in that? Most definitely, um, you know. So, you know what? I, I can say this. Back in the day, there was a stigma with going to therapy, right? And I feel like now, um, because it's being talked about so much. We're embracing therapy more. You know, you still have those ones that's like, I'm not crazy. And it has nothing to do with being crazy because, you know, that's that's what the thought was for for therapy. It was like, you know, you go to therapy because you're crazy. But now, you know, we're creating um, the we're having the conversation, you know, that Mm -hmm. sometimes you need someone to talk. So so it's not about being crazy, but it's about just um, talking to your feelings, talking throughout your feelings with someone. You know, it's about. just sharing your thoughts, you know, Mm -hmm. um, how should I do this? How should I do that? You know, and then with anger management coaching, you know, we're just teaching tools on how to handle anger. You know, we're teaching you that there are different ways to handle your anger, you know, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. um, with us, you know, we do have, you know, a lot of pinned up frustrations and things of that nature, but it's okay to talk to someone about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I, and and I felt, I, you know, during COVID is when I really seen the need for this kind of intervention, like yeah. really seen it. Like I've yeah. seen it because uh, during COVID, I had um, gotten a opportunity to work with some kids that were displaced as a result of COVID. Okay. Uh, and they were displaced in a hotel. And okay. sort of I got sort of chosen to go down there and really help, mm-hmm. you know, help the matter. And, you know, just seeing how you know, this, this life quaking situation, you know, how it impacted 
so many people and children, like, like, you know, and how the children were impacted. Yeah. And me being like a first responder to that situation and seeing all the different things that the kids as well as the families were grappling with. That's when I knew I, it, like it hit me like somebody got to talk to somebody. Yes. Like I, I knew I, 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 just, I just knew it. And I, I didn't really gain a strong appreciation for it until I actually seen it in action. Yeah. Like, and I seen people where they were like really in a, uh, a really bad state, you know, their attitude, their whole situation and to no fault of their own, they were just sort of thrusted. We all were thrusted, uh, in this, in this situation of how do we deal with this people surviving through it, dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, it became like a, a, a necessary, um, a thing that we had to have. And you guys were really some of the um, most awesome first responders to dealing with trauma mm -hmm. uh, during that COVID. And I was, and, and now, you know, as now I'm at the Hope Center and the Hope Center is the place uh, where people are, you know, are, are, are homeless and okay. trying to get themselves together. And so I even see it even more. So I've gained an appreciation for this, uh, so much. And so, you know, when you, when I saw your information, I knew you were coming on. I said, man, I, I can't wait to really get into this. Cause, cause I, you know, I, I know how impactful this was and how it helped so many people, you know what I mean? So I wanted to ask you, um, like what's, what are some of the strategies that you use in, in your techniques and how to, when you identify people's triggers of, of how they, you know, dealing with a situation, what are some of the things that you can share with our audience that they might be able to use and in, in when they identify, you know, certain things, when you identify That's certain triggers? So the main thing for me is to uh, let people know what is anger, right? So when you have the definition of anger, people are not able to articulate what anger is, right? So anger is a secondary emotion responding to an underlying emotion, right? So sometimes, you know, you know you're, you're asking somebody, you know, what's wrong? I'm mad, I'm mad. Okay, but what are you mad at? So it's always an underlying issue. So the underlying emotions are fear, uh, stress, food, you know, they can't, they, they don't have the proper provisions of food. You know, there's always an underlying issue that's causing them to become angry. So once we get that, you know, underlying emotion, once we find out what that is, then we can kind of expand from there, you know? Mm. We can talk about, you know, you're upset because, you know, you lost loved one, or you, we could talk about you're, you're mm -hmm. upset because, um, you know, you're in a impoverished state. We could talk about, you know, you, you're upset because you're frustrated. So it's important for me to find out what the underlying issue is and then we can kind of deal with it from there. Because mm -hmm. if you're not speaking to me, I, I don't, I, I, I won't be able to understand what's going on. So the first thing is to find out what the underlying issues are, you know, um, and yeah. then find that out. Then we can talk about your anger triggers, your anger cues, you know, what triggers you? Why, you know, if, if this happens, okay, we know that's going to trigger, you know, John, if this happens, we know that's going to, so we have to, it's important to have your village with you because, you know, when they see those things happening, they are able to jump in and say, mm -hmm. okay, we like Johnny take a walk for a second because we see that he's getting frustrated because of this situation. So it's very mm -hmm. important to find out what the underlying issues are, what the anger triggers are and what the anger cues are. So the anger cues, you know, you can tell when somebody's getting, you starting to get upset, you know, their fist starts balling up, their jaw starts clenching, they're walking yeah. back. So you have to look for these signs to find out, you know, okay, let's take a pause. You're getting upset. You know, this is even good in just, you know, friendships, relationships. You know what triggers your husband. You know what triggers your wife. So, you know, okay, yeah. I'm doing certain things. All right. I'm 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 probably going a little bit too far. So I got to I gotta stop, you know. So that's very important to find out what these things are so you can start dealing with those issues at the root. Mm. Oh, that's good. For those who are just tuning in, this is the Lisa Bradshaw from uh, Growing from Bit by Bit, uh, anger management uh, life coach, and uh, amongst other things, author as well. Um, we want to continue on that as well. Uh, also, um, I wanted to piggyback off what John, what you just said about the, um, the anger issue. You know, she has a uh, Lisa has, has a book out um, with mm -hmm. those who are interested in learning more about anger and how to manage it. 
Um, at least you want to uh, touch base on your book. Sure. So I wrote a book last year. It is an ebook. You can find it on my website, www.aliciabradshaw.com. It is, it's a great book. It's just a guide on, you know, just identifying what anger is, your anger triggers, your anger cues, you know, the things that I just spoke about. And it's just, it's just basically a guide to help you deal with, with these things. So it's, it's, I, I think it's great. <laughs> it's a, it's a really good book just to, you know, get you started on learning about yeah. what anger is. It's a powerful mm. book. I, I read it, uh, John. So the book um, has a lot of different topics, and um, um, I purchased it. Uh, she wanted me to purchase purchased it twice, but I told her that. You know, <laughs> one time. But I, I did purchase. No, I want. I, I want to purchase it definitely. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, purchase yeah, I want to definitely get that because that you know all the, ex the experiences I've had. Uh, you know, just just you know, you know, with, with COVID did. And and sometimes get, people can say something happened to them, and then some people can say something happened for them. Mm -hmm. I believe COVID happened for me in that sense mm -hmm. because it opened up something in me that I discovered about myself. Okay. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and it and it opened up some areas where I had to I had to really think about like, you know, some things that I need to consider for myself and certain triggers certain things you know about me that i had to really it, it, it bought it out and and i had to deal with it and uh i was like wow this is this is this is uh this is something and then i had to i had to turn around like really and develop healthy communication skills you got right it. to be able to communicate those so so can you speak to that about yeah. about just uh, just about you know developing the healthy communication skills around you know things that you may be you know grappling with uh you know in in your life and 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 how someone like you can really you know help remedy that definitely so when i was working in my program um one of the quotes that um our director used um she's a phenomenal woman dr betty kennedy she's amazing uh one of the quotes that she always told the kids um i'm not sure who the quote is by but um it always said if nothing changes nothing changes right mm -hmm. so with our communication styles, you know, if you know there's a, an issue with your communication, if nothing changes, nothing will change. You have to begin to just think about how you're speaking to someone, and if you're going to change it or not. So if I'm telling, so if I'm in a let, let's yes, let's use a friendship. If I'm telling my friend, I don't like the way you're speaking to me, mm -hmm. he continues to do it over and over and over again. Then I'm like, you know, but if we're going to deal with the head on, then Okay, this is what I need you to do. This is how I need you to speak to me. So I think that with communication, you have to teach the people that you are communicating with to, to learn how to, to teach them how to speak to you. You know, because if not, it's going to mm -hmm. be a cycle going over and over and over and over again. Even in relationships, you know, with spouses, you know, they're speaking back and forth and it's, you know, it's, it turns into a, a, a shouting match. If we're shouting, we can't hear each other, you know? Mm -hmm. So with me, when I come in, you know, I'm able to, you know, meet with either even individuals or families so we can look at their communication style. Okay. How are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. If this happens, what would you say to your child? And, you know, we'll go through scenarios to see, and I'll say, mm -hmm. okay, you know, maybe you could have said it this way, or maybe you could have said it that way. We're speaking to the child. Okay. Well, what did you say to your mom? You know, and then they'll say, tell me what they said. And I said, well, tell me how you could have said it differently. And then we'll role play. And then she's, they'll say, oh my goodness, Miss Alicia, you know, you're absolutely right. So it's just, we have to, you know, just find those ways to help um, people just change their language, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a yeah, question like, for you all as, as well. Yeah. Um, so in relation to what you just said as far as, um, you know, finding that point, this is very important for our listeners, the students at, DC, you know, DS, DSU, Bowie State, Virginia State, the college students um, who are struggling to identify, you know, they're, and may be angry, um how can they you know in relation i guess you know with your book how can you you know possibly give them information that can guide them through college because a lot of they got a lot of angry students who uh, don't know how to express themselves and mm -hmm. uh, want to get yourself in situations where um you know the college campus can be a dangerous situation for you or it can be a pleasant um mm -hmm. and a lot of students um they need to hear and see uh, you know uh, you know alumni who have made it through who have conquered and who can also can get back um what would you say to that you know those potential students who who, who may you know be struggling 
uh, so with anger. I would tell those students to always, you know, gra gravitate to a buddy. You know, if you can't, if, you, if you're not able to seek therapy services, get a friend. You don't have to deal with issues alone. You know, get a friend that you trust mm -hmm. um, and just begin to talk to them about the things that you're struggling with. Um, I do mm -hmm. things. I do this one activity with my clients. It's called a, a dump. So what you do is everything that you have in your mind, just start writing it down on the paper. No kind of order. Just dump, 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 dump. After you see what you wrote, mm -hmm. but go back and start taking things piece by piece and just start dealing with those issues. You know, because sometimes once it get out of our heads and we can just see it on papers, it's like, huh, okay. You know, you're just taking a mm -hmm. deep breath. Like, you know, um, I tell students to definitely uh, deep breathing. That works. You know, just taking mm -hmm. a deep breath, a pause, just taking a moment, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I do a lot of praying. Um, it is the yeah. center of everything that I believe in. And afterwards I'm able to get centered, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, get a friend journal, deep breathing prayer, you know, mm -hmm. um, That's cool. that I, I want to do, do, do the college campuses even have that type of resource. I'm just wondering, uh, because when I was going to college, I mean, uh, they didn't, they didn't really have that. Um, so a lot so of people are doing that now. I think that they're having. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, but I feel like a lot of schools are having spaces where you know kids are able to, young adults are able to uh, speak to counselors and things like that. Um, I'm not. Like I said, I'm not sure. But if they don't, that would be an excellent resource for them. Yeah, to no doubt. Because we need an outlet to talk to for people to talk yeah. to. Yeah, yeah definitely know? do. Yeah, that's that's I think that's so necessary on the college campus because, you know, yeah. you have a you have a kid, you know, that's just coming out of high school and particularly if he's gone far away, never been away from home, you know, um, you know, uh, and just and just never experienced life. And then all of a sudden he's experiencing life in abundance, <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. with all with all the personalities around him, all the different you know, trappings of um, success or failure or different, and, you know, just just a whole lot of different things. And so I think I think your services are so necessary, um, you know, for for kids that are, you know, experiencing different emotions mm -hmm. that they may ha never have, you know, yeah. really dealt with because now they're in a whole new environment. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, what I wanted to ask you is, is, is you know, I. I'm of the old ad, adage that says uh, facts tell, but stories sell, right? So is there any success stories that you can give us without, of course, naming names of people that have benefited from your services? Definitely. You know, I've, I've worked with so many youth, you know, um, one in particular that I can, one story that I can think about is I worked with this gentleman. And when he came into the program, you know, he he didn't want to talk to anybody. You know, mm. he was just so angry. So I had to figure out a way to connect with him. You know, so I'm asking him, do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this? And he's just looking at me like I'm crazy. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I got a hint, hunch, but I was talking to him. I said, did you see the game last night? He was like, you watch basketball? And I was like, yes, I watch basketball. You know, so you have to sometimes find ways to be able to connect to the child. So. Mm -hmm. You have to be relatable, you know? So it's just not all about you coming in there, you're acting like this big, oh, I'm going to tell you what to do, and we're going to know. Because these these kids, they don't know you. So you have mm -hmm. to build trust before they're able to start talking to you, you know? Yeah. So say all of that, you know, um, you know, once I was able to open up to him about basketball, you know, we began to talk, and he began to share things with me about, you know, what was going on with him and his family. And we were able to, you know, to help to help um some issues that he was going through you know um, okay. to say is with coaching you know this is not an overnight thing you know mm -hmm. um, yeah, no with anger management coaching this is a thing where you're literally you have to work it this is like exercising you know you have to work this program you have to work it until mm -hmm. things begin to change you know you're not going to see your body change from, from working out in in five days you know maybe mm -hmm. maybe so but with coaching, you'll start seeing things blossom and blossom, you know, days ahead, you know. Yeah, so over time. Overnight success is going to take time. It's going to take work. It's going to take trust for you That's to right. talk to people and then they'll open up to you. That's right. 
Because sometimes yeah. it takes years to become an overnight success. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it takes, you know, it takes a lot of coaching. It takes all those things to help, you know, to help you be a, a, a more healthier person. Exactly. Right. Um, so that, that's that's good. That's good. I'm, I had a question. Um, uh, what role what what role does mindfulness or um, like re relaxation techniques? You know, because people are so like, you know, you know, some some I know some people are, you know, that I've seen or experienced or, have, you know, they may some some people's anger is underlining. They may be quiet, like you're talking about, but some may be very overt and they're, you know, they're, you know, so what are, what are some techniques that you may use, you know, that somebody can even use at home? Like right now, you know, if they if they're looking at this and, and they're hearing this, what are some techniques that you can sort of give them to maybe relax and get them in a different state. Definitely. So mindfulness is very, very important, right? Because for me, meditation can take you from not doing it, not meditating or meditating can take you from zero to a hundred, right? So you can be in a rageful state. If you just take your time, take a pause, take a deep breath, mm -hmm. release, take a deep breath and release. It will make your body feel so much better. Um, and people take for granted just the ability just to take a deep, close your eyes, take a deep breath, take a pause, mm -hmm. and it will literally calm you down, you know? So um, I always recommend Headspace. The, is an app called Headspace. I recommend mm -hmm. that to clients where, you know, if they're not with me and we're not going through like the deep breathing um, technique, then they can download Headspace. It's a guided meditation um, app. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'll Headspace take Yes, it's called Headspace. It's an amazing app. Um, and then with my program, um, we do have a, a module on um, meditation and deep breathing. So um, it's an amazing module for mm. us, to the kids, how to, or not even kids, teach people how to uh, to breathe. Um, you know, I do one, you know, one, two, three, breathe in, one, two, three, release. You know, you do that a few times and then your body just starts cooling down and calming mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've been in environments where, you know, they use very, you know, melodious music, you know, those things that really help to, you know, soothe your senses. Exactly. So you can now begin to receive, you know, what it is you need. Now, you have a it, what what would you say your tailored approach? Like everybody has a, you know, has a custom or tailored approach to how they actually, you know, uh administer their their kind of uh you know this distract you know that you use to actually help people what definitely what, what would... so um so right now i'm operating as alicia and b anger management group but um i am i have a nonprofit, and um we will be launching very very soon but in within both programs what we do is i have a two-week anger management coaching program and then what we do is we have uh, seven different modules. So with each module, we go through different things about anger. So that's how our program is tailor made for for people, mm -hmm. right? So I won't go through all of the modules, but one of the modules that's um, becoming my favorite as I as I'm still writing it out, um, it's called Who Am I? You know. So mm -hmm. with that module, we're going through you know who you are as a person. Who do you see yourself as? You know, with this particular one, when I'm working with families, um, we're going through this module with the child with the the, the parent, you know, the child is telling the parent, you know, how they see themselves. And then the parent is telling the child how they see them. Because sometimes, you know, parents and kids, they're not talking, you know, mm -hmm. they don't even know that, you know, the parent is proud of them. So that's the opportunity for the parents to say, you know, I see you as beautiful. I see you as strong. I see you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's sometimes just take the child from, you know, bow head to like, oh, wow, I didn't know. I didn't know you see me as that, you know? Yeah. And that's Mm -hmm. one of my module because it gets so emotional because that's my opportunity to find out what's going on in the home what's the family dynamic so from there i know how to you know direct the rest of the these these modules so um we have that we have like i said we have ang we talk about anger what is anger what are your anger triggers we have um mm -hmm. uh, we have someone coming in talking about um emotional intelligence you know surrounding anger so our program is you know it's 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 really great you know um to just cover different topics on how to just navigate yourself through anger 
Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, 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 that's really important. It really is. Um, you know, that people can have a roadmap to, uh, you know, to really help you know, to get the kind of help they need so yeah, they can be the best version of themselves. I yeah, think that's important. Vince, yeah. you had a question? And then also, not, uh, piggybacking off of uh, what, so, you know, in closing, at least, um, you know, um, on the Spotlight series, we definitely, uh, uh, we want to get the person or person's uh, company out there. Um, now, your company, um, of course, which is uh, bit by bit, um, together we grow. Uh, you you want to talk about the, the function? I know we have a, a network fundraiser event coming up. Yes. Um, so, on, on, excuse me. On June 13th, we are having a networking fundraiser event. It's going mm -hmm. to be at the Delta Hotel. Uh, the event is from 4 to 8 o'clock. So there we are going to be um, raising funds for youth mm -hmm. and families. Uh, there we're going to be doing sound auctions. One sound auction that I am so excited about is um, we have a company called Pure Planet Events. They are donating a trip to South Africa. So oh, wow. awesome. items is going to be amazing. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have a lot of um, different businesses there to you know talk about their businesses and showcase their business and giving away uh, auction items and raffles. So it's going to be a good time for us mm. to uh, network and fundraise to help families in need. So you hear that third June thirteenth, uh, bit by bit, will be uh, having a network fundraiser event at the Delta. Uh, the, if people don't know who that is that's the Delta Hotel, uh, Philadelphia, right off of Essington, um, and. Um, if you need more information, just go to the website, uh, which is posted below, uh, growingbitbybit.org. You need to contact her. It's info at uh, growingbitbybit.org. Uh, John, in closing, um, anything you, um, anything else that you want to, you want to ask or say? I just want to say, sis, this was a, a a great interview. I'm so glad to get to meet you, and you. Uh, I'm looking forward to ordering your book so I can I can uh, get it for myself and and. Uh, and I know some things in there can not only help me, it can help a whole lot of other people. So I want to thank you for coming on. You know, I really appreciate you and your work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Everybody, thank you for um, coming out today for Spotlight.